I stood once in front of uh, an area of um, elite producers and stars and social, you know, just everybody that made up the, entire, the entirety of the power structure of our industry. And I wanted to say something, and you know, they, they kept saying, oh, let another person. I was a young actor then. And I said something that a lot of people still consider abominable to this day, and I'm about to say it again. And I asked them, can any, because every one of them got up and said, oh, I made that person. Every star of consequence came under somebody. Oh, I gave this person their first chance. I did this for that person. Without me, you wouldn't do this thing. So it's what we're having a battle between actors and producers at that time. Apparently, we got banned because they said I engineered and orchestrated a group that was asking for too much money. Isn't that ridiculous? So apparently, our producers were becoming multi-millionaires, and the actors, not me, I mean guys that were slightly lower, were struggling. And so I called the group and I said, we need to change the structure. Without us, they don't exist. We are the ones the fans know. We're the ones with the gift and the talent. Why, why would they be earning more than us? Why, why, why is there no balancing skill, some sort of skill where at least something could be measured, barometer by which they would say at least we're doing well? Why is the gap so distinct? Why is there a total disconnect in the wealth, in the, in the wealth appraisal between us and them? So I said everybody should start asking for more money. So they got together and banned me for two years. And when they banned us for two years, they brought a new crop of actors to take our place. Check the history. Totally relatable story you can find in our archives. So these new guys they brought could not make the billing. They weren't making enough money. The fans totally rejected them. They could not make the one million sales, two million sales that we were snapping out of our repertoire with our movies. So they came back to bring us back. Isn't God wonderful? They brought us back. On the negotiating table, everybody had something to say. I made you, I made you. Without me, you wouldn't have been that. I give you your first chance. My colleagues kept quiet because everybody had a leaning, had somebody to point out to say, without you, I wouldn't have been whatever it is I became. So I said one thing and I said, can somebody in this room stand up and truthfully claim that without them, that I wouldn't have come up? Not one person. Not one person. Because I knew how I started it. I knew the belief that I had the belief base that I had, it was totally, I just fixated on God, refused to do small roles. For the first two, three years of my career, I couldn't do a major role because they kept giving me small roles and I refused them. I said, if it's not a major or a lead, I'm not doing it. So three years for a guy that just left home, it's a long time to be broke. Trust me, at some point you will bend. You will compromise. You will take the little pigeons. But my self-value was way too high. It wasn't about money. It wasn't about anything. I just knew that this is the standard I set. And I, was going, I wasn't going to relent it. Not for anybody. Not even for myself. So no matter what I was going through, it's just a question of time. It has to be understood in this room that whatever you're going through is just a question of time. The overriding factor is your total belief in yourself. And so my day came one day. Some of the most established stars had gone for an event in London called Afro Hollywood. And so there was a space, a vacancy of top mill stars for film. They went there, stayed longer than they planned, stayed over a month. So they said, okay, there was a vacancy. How are we going to fill it? We need to make movies. These guys are not coming back. But they were female leads. So they said, okay, you know what? Where's that guy, that, that funny boy with a funny accent that's always rejecting small roles? Yeah, go bring him. Let's make do with him for a few days before the big boys come back. So they brought little me. Dumped me there, paid me peanuts. Trust me, you don't want to know how much these guys were paying me. I received as much as fifteen to 20,000 naira for lead. 
in dollars, let me explain it, is less than $30, $40, or maybe $50 are worse. So they brought me back. I did four films, being paid peanuts. Every time I was paid peanuts, something was wrong with the wardrobe. I would spend out of that little money because I had to look right. That's one thing, when the opportunity meets, okay, your preparation. I was always prepared. It was almost like I lived all my life waiting for this chance. And when it came, we wrote four films. I spent 80% of what I was paid looking right for the film. So all my earlier films you saw, that was me buying the wardrobe out of my pocket. I finished those four. The big boys came back. They kicked me out again and stuck with the big names. But lo and behold, all four films came out all over one million sales. So they had no choice. They came back for me to say, okay, you know what, you can come back. Yeah, we see that you really deserve a place here. And I charged them one million per script after that. So it's that simple. Your chance will come if you understand you. Thank you.